What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you've been here before, thanks for tuning in to yet another video. And if you're new here, please get down there and hit subscribe. And while you're down there, hit the little bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video. So today, well, not today, but today and the days to come are gonna be some very exciting days because I think we're gonna fix a huge issue on the E60. So I don't know if you guys can hear this, but this motor is having like a rattle sound. Let me see if I can get you guys to hear better. So I hear a slight rattle from this area and I think it might be coming from the Vano system. It's not a bad rattle at all. It's just annoying for me. So even if doing the anti-rattle kit on the Venos doesn't fix the problem, like I said, the rattle is very minimal. The main problem is this, watch, I'll show you. So I'm out in a test drive right around the house. Um, I wanna show you guys what this car is doing because it's very annoying for a car guy like me. So I know my check engine light is on and everything, but look, when I try to rev my car out, doesn't sound good check engine light comes on it says engine malfunction um, and it goes into like a limp mode basically so if I were to come to a complete stop which I can't do right now so if I come to a complete stop the whole car just shakes and if you go outside it almost sounds like it's knocking like the whole engine shakes so much and it sounds like it's knocking and then when you go to drive it it's like super underpowered like it barely wants to move and this happens almost every time i want to rev my car out and it goes away after driving like a normal person for like 10 to 15 minutes or if i were to come to a complete stop turn it off and turn it right back on it goes away like nothing happened so again, let me show you guys. That does not sound good at all, but let me show you guys, look. Right now it's doing it. Yeah, you can hear it for sure. I'll turn it off, keys in my hand, put the key right back in, go to start it like nothing happened it's so weird so i'm almost positive that it's my vano system that completely took a crap on me so what i got to fix this problem i got the seal kit as you can see right here we got new seals for the piston and we got the anti-rattle kit so i didn't just get the rings i also got brand new roller bearings for both exhaust and intake side so going above and beyond and i just dropped it hopefully i didn't ruin it but I'm going above and beyond for this because, like I said, it's very annoying that I can't rev the car out. And when I drive any manual car, I just love revving the crap out of it. So it kind of sucks that I haven't been able to do that. So since I'm doing that, I thought I would make this video even sweeter. My E60 has a dual Vano system and we're swapping a motor in the E30 if you've been following the videos. That swap has a single Vano system and I just got done powder coating it. So right now i'm gonna go ahead and knock this seal and anti-rattle kit while i'm at it i got the seal and the rattle ring in here so i'm gonna go ahead and get the e60 taken apart since this video is only about the vano system to basically get to it in every car you have to take the valve cover off and in most cases you have to take the whole cowl assembly off so every car since every car is different and it, this is not what it's about it's about the vano system we're not going to cover this um we're just going to go ahead and wipe the whole entire assembly away so bam there we go so we got the valve cover off and the whole cowl assembly off so now we have the vano system exposed right here we're going to go ahead and remove these caps and everything in them right now while it's still on the car then we're gonna remove the whole system so I'm gonna keep a rag handy right there you don't have to take this cooling line out of the way I just took it off to give you guys a clear unobstructed view so basically we're gonna start by removing these caps they are an eight millimeter hex so go ahead and loosen that 
and they're going to be on there pretty tight so i'm going to help go ahead and do both there we go put a rag under there so we know we're ready in case some oil starts to spill that was a lot more oil than i was expecting I'm gonna try to be even more prepared for this second one because that was a lot of oil. So let's go ahead and remove this one. Gonna go ahead and spray some brake cleaner on it. Try to get rid of this mess I just made. All right, so behind those bolts we have some little plastic retainers we go ahead and pull them out for you guys so these are the plastic retainers so let's go ahead and pull the other side out gonna have to use some angled needle nose for these or for this one I should say There we go, got this one out. Now we can go ahead and remove the bolts in here. These are a T30 Torx. And the most important thing is keep your ratchet on the on position um, because these are left-handed threads. So it's not righty tighty lefty loosey in this case, it's the opposite way around. So make sure that, let's do this one first. Make sure that you're in there really nice and then go ahead and tighten it so you can break it loose and then it should come off. And then this one down here, you gotta kinda just do it blindsided, but just go ahead and keep feeling for it. Don't crank at it until you're positive that it's in there. See, right now I know I'm in there, so I'm gonna go ahead and break it loose. So much oil I was not expecting all of this oil so I'm gonna go ahead and take it out by hand and this is the little bolt that goes in there so now that we got both sides taken care of now we can take the whole assembly out so we have to take a bunch of little 10 millimeters out this one is an 11 and then the one on the bottom is a 13 then we have to undo some connectors I think it's three of them that we have to undo I already went ahead and undid this one and then the one down there on the bottom. So we have to do this one and I think we should be good to start coming out. So let's go ahead and get this taken care of. So as you guys can see, this is a very dirty job. My advice to you guys, if you're gonna do this job, make sure you have lots and lots of rags and brake clean because there's gonna be oil everywhere. But we got it off now. One thing I forgot to mention was you have to take this oil feed line off from the side over here or right here. Yeah, it's right here. So take this off, it's a 19 millimeter, you're gonna have to use a wrench on it. And then once you get the 11 that I told you about over here for the engine hook, you have to take the stud out as well and that one's a 13. So pull that out and then everything just comes out all at once. But yeah, when you're taking it off, it gets kind of like stuck on these dowels right here, but just pry it, like gently pry it with like, uh, I used a little trim tool. I just lightly pried it and then it came apart. Then the whole thing just slid right out. So since it's all oily, I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in the parts washer, get it nice and cleaned up, and then we will be back to rebuild the whole thing. So I didn't want this video to be like all over the place, but I think it will be a little bit. I have the Vano system and the valve cover here in the parts washer, but I wanna let it dry on its own. It was very dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and do the single Vanos right here. When I'm editing this video, 
I will post the time right here of where you can skip to. That way, if you're here only for the dual venos, then you know where to go. But if you wanna learn how to do both, then stick around. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this one because I powder coated this one so it's nice and clean. They have a lot of similarities, but they're also kind of different. So this is why I'm doing both in this video. So you guys know how to do both. If you're having to do a single, then you know how to do a single. If you need to do a dual, then you know how to do a dual. But basically we're gonna go ahead and remove these tens first. We're gonna pop this out and then the whole piston will come out. As you can see, we got the piston out of the Vano system. So the rattle comes right here. Look, if you guys can see this, it's like super loose in there. So that's why we got the seal kit and we got the anti-rattle ring right here. First things first, you're gonna have to take this nut off. So this is a very, very shallow 18. Most sockets come like bubbled at the end, so you need like a special socket or you can grind down a normal socket, I guess. This is actually a special one just for this. So you basically just put it on there, you snap it off and then the whole thing comes out and then you can get to the bearings and the sleeves in there. Make sure you have some soft jaws on your vise so you don't damage anything. So just throw it in there, tighten it up and then you can start cranking at it. When you have it in a vertical position like this, the bolt or whatever this big thing you wanna call it, whenever that comes off, a washer and one of the roller bearings will come out with it. So just make sure that you get it in the right orientation. So I know mine are correct. Now we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna clamp it on the gear so that we can start getting that little bolt out. This one right here, is left hand thread so it's not righty tighty lefty loosey it's righty loosey lefty tighty <laughs> kind of weird to say but let's go ahead and grab it on the gear and let's start taking this off so this one happens to be a t30 torx just like on the dual venos so again make sure your ratchet is on the on position so you can take it off so let's go ahead and Take this off, there we go. We're gonna do the rest by hand. All right, we take this other washer off and then this whole thing should just slide out. Got this other bearing out and now we can take the sleeve off. So I'm gonna go get a pick to get that out and then we can replace it with the new one. All right, we're gonna throw this new one in. Let me just go ahead and get this cleaned up. Make sure there's no debris in there. Now we can throw the new ring in. Just make sure it seats all the way at the bottom. Now you can start Throwing everything back in, so the bearing, and then the bolt. And we can start tightening this down. Not often you come in contact with these reverse threads, so it feels very weird getting tight the wrong way. Make sure you press the piston all the way in, that way you don't have to keep threading. It got hard on me, then it went down a little bit, so that's how when I realized that I needed to do it. but. Now it's tight, so we're gonna go ahead and torque it to eight Newton meters. Go ahead and get this torque down. Let's see if you guys can see that right there. Now we can go ahead and throw everything back in. Again, try to keep everything in the same orientation. So we're gonna go ahead, bearing, washer, and then this. Now we're gonna take it off of the gear.
and back to just the face of it like we had it earlier. All right, so we're done with the rattle kit. As you can see, look, I'm holding it with one hand and I'm gonna try to rattle it. Nothing. It's not rattling at all. So that's what you want. And you also want it to spin freely without binding. So we know we're good to go. We fixed the rattling with the ring and there's no binding. So we torqued it to the right spec. So where it's not loose and it's not tight. So now it's time to do the ring seals. So we're gonna go ahead and take them off. First one out. There we go. Kind of wanted to fight me a little bit, but it's out. Now we can go ahead and throw the rubber one on first. Make sure it's nice and properly seated. Then we can go ahead and do this one. This one's not as stretchable, so it's gonna be a little harder. There we go. So it's seated nicely everywhere, but in this area. So we're gonna try to fix that because we want it as flat as possible. All right, so we got it in there now, nice and flat, because you don't want it to be a little bit cocked because you might think it's gonna seat itself properly on its own, but chances are unlikely, so make sure it's right before you try putting it in. So now that we have this on, we're gonna go ahead and use some assembly lube. Gonna put some on the ring and on the walls as well. Now you're gonna wanna put it in at an angle and then just push it in like that. Make sure you line it up. So right there it's pretty tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it there for two minutes and it should seat itself. After that we're gonna pull it out and put it right back in and make sure that it's nice and snug but not too tight because like right there I can barely pull it off. So it's been a few minutes. Let's go ahead and pop it out. And then once we pop it out, it should be able to pop in a lot easier. So all right. Let's go ahead and try to put it back in. That should be good right there. So it went in super easy right there. All right, so it's making good suction. So I know it's making a good seal. One last time for good measure. Bam, yep, we're good. So let's go ahead and throw these bolts back in and we are done with this single unit. Go ahead and tighten them down in a crisscross pattern, or I guess I'm gonna make a star. All right, so the single unit is now complete. So now we're on to the dual system. So we're gonna start with the exhaust side. This side has a spring in it, so make sure that you keep your hand on it so that it doesn't you know, spring out at you. So we're gonna take two off completely. And then we're just gonna loosen these up a little bit, little by little, and that's how we're gonna take it off. All right, and here's the spring. 
So try to keep it in the same orientation. So I'm gonna lay it down, or I guess stand it up on the side right there. So it kind of like tapers. So make sure you use the big side on the bottom and then the small side on the top. So if your kit comes with new gaskets, you can go ahead and take this off. If yours doesn't, then make sure you're careful with it. Um, I like replacing all gaskets every time there's a gasket involved in any job I do. I like replacing it, so I got new ones, so I don't have to worry about it. Let's go ahead and take the intake side off. This one doesn't have a spring, so. So the piston decided to stay in on this one, but look how, like, no resistance whatsoever here. So that's when you know it was worn, like, if I can do all of this while it's still in it, it's not good. So glad we're doing this. I'm sure this one was just, oh, there we go. I'm sure this one was just as bad. Yeah, it's just as bad. So we're gonna start by doing the rattle kit, which consists of the rattle ring, I guess you can call it, and the roller bearings. So we're gonna go ahead and take these over to the vise. We're gonna hold it down and we're gonna take these 24 millimeter nuts off. So we're gonna do that and that will expose where the roller bearings and the rattle ring go. So let's go ahead, put it on the vise and get this thing taken care of. All right, we got our piece here on the vise. Make sure it's clamped nice and tight because you don't want it to spin on you. So let's go ahead and take this 24 off. All right. And now we are at the bearings so let's go ahead and remove the bearing so we got one right here i'm gonna go ahead and lay it down right here and then you remove this washer and then you get to the other bearing right here and then you can remove the rattle ring if that's what it's called all right, so here we go. I tried using just a pick, but I found out that it's easier to just use a little pocket screwdriver and just work your way around it. And then once you have it up a little bit, you can fit both and just bring it up. So we're gonna go ahead and clean this. Now we can get our new kit. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some silicone spray in here so that nothing goes in dry. You want to make sure the ring goes in all the way. All right, I think we're good. So now we're going to go ahead and install the first set of roller bearings. Throw those in there. Then comes the washer. Going to make sure I clean this off. then spray it that's on there next bearing and then we can go ahead and install our nut so the nut actually brings well, it doesn't bring there's another washer that goes on top of that bearing but once you take it off the oil in it will just make it stick so that it doesn't fall off so make sure you take it off so you can go ahead and clean it get some spray on there and last but not least And just start threading it by hand. I like to go till it's hand tight, or I guess finger tight, and then and then I hit it with the gun. So it's tight right there. So I'm just gonna give it a couple ugga duggas with the gun. And we're good on this one. So that's how you do the rattle kit. So next we have to do the the ring seal kit but i'm gonna go ahead and do the rattle kit on the other one first so now that we got both rattle kits done on these 
We're gonna go ahead and clean the caps off with some brake clean, wipe them down and put the new gaskets in. And then all we have to do is do the ring seal kit and then we're good to go. So the gaskets bring a little tab right here. So you don't put it on the wrong way. There's only one way it can go. So that's what's nice about it. So now that we have our new gasket on, we can set this to the side. All right, so gaskets are in. All we have to do now is the ring seal. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna cut the O-rings kind of like in a diagonal form like that and once you do that they should just come right off like that now let's get this second one all right so now both of them are off now let's go ahead and take the small ones out there goes one so the inner one is going to be a little harder to remove but basically it's the same thing you just have to fight with it a little more. So let's go ahead and grab our new O-rings and we're gonna start with the small ones first. This one should just go right in like that. And I'm pretty sure this one's gonna be a little harder to get on. There we go. Again, make sure it's not twisted. Make sure it's seating nice and straight. Now we're gonna take our assembly lube, lube it up real quick. Now we're gonna put this in at an angle, and then once it's in, we're gonna leave it in for about two minutes so it can properly seat. So what I have found is that once you have it in, um, it's easier to put your nail in there and try to push the ring in once half of it is in, just push the top part in and then push it the whole piston in and it should slide in. So right now it's all the way in. So we're gonna let it be like this for like two minutes and then we know it'll be properly seated. So we're gonna wait two minutes and then we're gonna take it out, put our gasket back on and then we should be good to go. All right, so it's been about two minutes. I know I said we have to take it off to put the gasket on. You can actually put the gasket on with the piston in, but you do wanna take it out just to make sure that it did seat properly. So pull it out like this and then just visually inspect it and make sure it's seating properly and then you can toss it right back in like that so now we know we're having good contact right there it's making a nice seal so we can go ahead and do the big rings and you kind of this is optional, but I like leaving this on because it just makes it a better and easier surface to hold on to while we put the piston in this barrel right here. So like I said, up to you, you can leave it off and just put the piston in, but I like doing it this way. So let's go ahead and throw the big O-rings on. There we go. Make sure it's seated properly and time to lube it up. All right, now let's throw this in there. Again, at an angle, it should just slide right in. Now we're gonna leave this one in there for about two minutes, let it properly seat itself, pull it out, We'll put the gasket on, bolt it up, and we'll be good to go. In the meantime, I'm gonna be doing this one right here. So I'll catch you guys when they're both ready to just bolt right in. All right, so they're both pretty much done. I just need to throw the gasket back on this one. So let's go ahead and clean the surface. And throw it back on for the last time. I'm gonna start the bolts by hand. Go ahead and zap them on. All right, so now we have to do the exhaust side. Now remember the exhaust side has the spring, so make sure you put the spring in. And then this one you're gonna have to push down and start the screws. So it's a little bit more difficult, but it's doable.
All right, so now we can go ahead and crank it. So now that both kits are done, both the ring seal and the rattle kit, we can go ahead and put this back on the car. So once we put it back on the car, we'll be able to put in the bolt and the cap, both caps, I guess, back here that we took off originally on the car. So let's go ahead and go throw this back on the car. So make sure that the surface is clean and then you can go ahead and throw your gasket on. So put them through the studs like this over this dowel pin right here. And I like to start the nuts by hand first. That way I know everything is going in straight and nothing is going in cross-threaded. So let's go ahead and start by tightening them down from the middle and move outward. All right, so my camera died as soon as I started tightening these nuts down, but one thing I do want to mention is make sure you put this hook on before you put on the oil feed line because I put it on first and then I couldn't get it on so I had to take it back off to put it on. So make sure you put this on first, then your oil feed line, and then you should be good to go. So I have everything tightened up right now. I got all three connectors on. So now I can go ahead and put our bolts in. Remember these are left-handed threads. And after that, we can put our plugs and then we can put our caps and we're good to go. So remember that these are left-handed threads. So we're gonna go ahead and go counterclockwise to tighten it down. I'm gonna do both just finger tight and then I will torque them down to eight Newton meters. Now we grab our pliers and then we put these caps in, or plugs I should call them. So this one's hard to get to, but I sort of kind of got it in with the pliers and then you can push it in with your fingers and you'll hear it and feel it snap in. So once you know it's in, then you're good to go. And all you have to do now is put in your caps and these are normal threads. So let's go ahead and tighten these down. So the Vanos kit is completely installed now, so let's go ahead and install everything else. We wiped it off, so now let's wipe it back on. Bam, there we go. So everything is put back together. Now all we have to do is start it. All right, and we are good to go. So they say it's best to drive the car for like two, 300 miles um, and keeping it under 3,000 RPMs just to let the ring seals seat all the way and then you can get on it So that's what I'm gonna be doing. So if you guys want to know how it goes Make sure you're subscribed so that you guys know if it worked or it didn't so that's gonna do it for this video guys I hope you guys enjoyed if you did make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to the channel and while you're down there hit the little bell icon so you get notified every time I post a new video but that's gonna do it so as always keep moving forward and stay on the gas